Okay, hello. Thank you for being here on this Tuesday, May the 12th. Today we're hosting a presentation on COVID-19, Protecting You and Your Family, Part 1, Managing Finances. My name is Ashley, Client Services Coordinator, and I have the privilege of introducing our presenter, Vincent Russo. He's the managing partner of Russo Law Group, Long Island's signature elder law, special needs, and estate planning law firm with five offices on Long Island and New York City. Vincent has championed the rights of seniors and those with special needs since 1985. He is a co-founder of the Teresa Alessandra Russo Foundation for Children with Special Needs, uh, which was established in memory of his daughter, Teresa. Vincent is also founding member, fellow, and fifth president of the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys. Now, before I pass it over, a quick housekeeping item. Please send us your questions, but include your email address. We will do our best to answer everyone, but if we can't, we will, of course, follow up after the program. All right, thanks for your attention. Now, I'd like to hand it over to Vincent. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, really appreciate all the help you give me putting these presentations together. And it's great to be with everyone again. Uh, we've been pretty much on a weekly basis during this uh, emergency period here in New York, the pause. And um, today, I think the topic is really an important one, especially in light of the fact that uh, there are so many who are homebound uh, with the virus or have um, unfortunately been hospitalized uh, and also for those who are in um, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, where pretty much they've been in a uh, kind of a lockdown mode, so to speak. And so how do we make sure we protect ourselves and our family, our loved ones, um, in particular when we're dealing with financial issues? So today we're going to tackle how are you managing your finances during this crisis? What if you lack capacity to manage your financial affairs? And what is the key legal document that everyone should have? So let's start with how are you managing your finances during this vi uh, virus uh, crisis period? And I think here we all have taken stock of our own finances uh, and what we own and how we're spending money. So I would start with having a budget, that every, everyone should have a budget, uh, which takes into account what income uh, they have on a regular basis coming in on a monthly basis, and then what are the expenditures on a monthly basis? Uh, and what leeway do you have in terms of how you spend your money? I think we all have been very careful on what we're spending our money on, and some of us are spending less money because we're not traveling and we're not paying for gas in our, in our, with our cars. Um, so I think the key is to be really cautious. Um, and if you don't have a budget, create one. Now, we also should be maximizing whatever the government is offering. I know the stimulus checks have gone out. Some have not received it, uh, but you will uh, hopefully um, shortly. Uh, and to make sure that um, you took advantage of that. <clears throat> also, for the small business owners, the Paycheck Protection Program was so important and it's still open. So there are some of the smaller banks in particular that have funds still available to help small businesses cover their payroll expenses and their rent. Now, <clears throat> what happens if what happens if you come down with the virus? What happens if you are hospitalized? Who can manage your assets and pay your bills? So we know that you're still in charge. As long as you have capacity, you're managing your own financial affairs and that's the way it should be. You should be controlling your life when it comes to personal decision-making, healthcare decision-making and financial decision-making. But what happens if you are incapacitated, perhaps on a temporary basis, and you're just not up for um, how to uh, deal with your financial issues and management of your assets. So if you're not able to, no one has the legal right 
to make financial decisions for you. And that can be a disaster. Your bills aren't getting paid. When your taxes have to be filed by June 15th, in this example, perhaps you're not able to um, file them. How about managing your brokerage account, especially in this time where the stock market is like a bouncing ball going up and down. So you could be married and you could love each other and you could be married for 50 years, but that doesn't give your spouse the right, the legal right to make financial decisions. So here in New York, we have to look at state law to figure this out, all right? Let me advance the slide. So when we talk about management of assets and income, Let's be clear about what we're talking about. We're talking about your bank accounts, your brokerage accounts. We're talking about your home, real estate. We're talking about your digital assets. We're talking about pension, IRAs, 401k plan. We're talking about um, dealing with the tax authorities or perhaps you're dealing with the uh, Department of Social Services with regard to Medicaid or Social Security Administration regarding benefits uh, under Social Security Disability or SSI, Supplemental Security Income. This, it's really important, especially now that every day we're making sure we're managing our finances. Now, who can step in to be your agent under a durable power of attorney? Because the durable power of attorney is the document that's going to allow you to appoint an agent, typically a family member, a trusted uh, friend, to be able to step in and help you. Now, you're enhancing your power here to allow that person to act you're not taking away from your own ability to act. So this is a what if situation. So selecting the agent can be a really important decision. You can appoint one agent or more than one agent. So you can have two agents acting at the same time. If you have two act agents acting at the same time, then you have to decide whether you're going to require them to act jointly or to act separately. Often we recommend separately, as long as you trust both of those individuals, they have to make decisions together, but then when you go to implement, it's easier to say separately. So only one signature would, would be required or only one person on the phone with your uh, stockbroker, for example. Also, in any planning that we do, we always recommend that you always have backup, 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 just like you want to make sure you're backing up your computer. So you should name successor agents because something unfortunately could happen to one of your agents. So who steps in after that person? So having the decision here on who your agent should be is one of the most important decisions that you're going to have to make when it comes to the durable power of attorney. Now, I often hear that you don't need one. Someone comes up to me after I do a lecture and they say, well, I don't need one. I'm covered. And I say, well, how are you covered? And they say, well, all my assets are joint. So I don't have a problem. My joint owner can act for me. But that is not the case in a whole list of situations. So that answer does not solve the issue you have if you have retirement counts, such as an IRA or a 401k or a 403b plan. No one can access those accounts except you. Your pension plan, same situation. How about you own life insurance or an annuity? And you may have named a beneficiary, but that doesn't give you the right uh, in someone else to step in and act on your behalf when it comes to a life insurance policy or annuities that you own. Jointly owned real estate. 
you want to sell it, it takes two signatures, not one. And you may have opened accounts and have assets jointly at a bank or um, more so with a brokerage firm where you've noted when you open the account that it requires two signatures. That could be problematic. Signing tax returns, even if you're married and you're married filing joint, doesn't give the spouse the right to sign your name. Medicaid planning. Perhaps you need to transfer assets out of your name to qualify for Medicaid. Well, that's a gift. And there's no one who has the legal right to take assets out of your name. And if so, even if you could take assets out, there's a concern about self-dealing. Now, you can provide for that, the ability to do Medicaid planning, and even to transfer assets to yourself through a comprehensive, durable power of attorney. In New York, it would be a statutory durable power of attorney. Another one on my list, maintaining your membership and involvement in your church or temple. Even opening the US mail that's addressed to you. No one has the right to open up your mail. Now, if you don't have a durable power of attorney as your solution, then what happens if no one can step in legally? In that situation, you, if you had limited capacity or an interested party, family member typically, they're gonna to have to commence a court proceeding to have the court appoint a legal guardian. This will take time. It typically would take months to get a legal guardian appointed by the court. And now during this emergency period, the court is only dealing with emergency type cases. And even then you would go in as an emergency type situation I'm not sure how long it's really going to take to get someone legally appointed to act on your behalf. The process can be very expensive too. It can cost a fair amount of money, thousands of dollars in, in having an attorney step in, prepare all the guardianship papers that have to be filed with the court and then represent you at a hearing. And this is the worst of it, you will have no control as to who is appointed. So if you lack capacity, and if you have capacity, there's no need for a guardian. If you lack capacity, then it's up to the judge to decide who the appropriate party is. And we have seen in our experience that when family members fight over mom or dad, the court generally will step in and say, wait a second, the two of you are not getting along or the three of you, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna appoint an independent legal guardian, someone who never met your mother or father, someone who's now deciding on how your parents' assets are being handled. Now, a guardianship proceeding is really important if there was a failure to have a durable power of attorney. So how do you protect you and your family is through advanced directives. When it comes to finances, it's the durable power of attorney. In New York, we have a statute. So you would want to sign a statutory durable power of attorney. The statutory durable power of attorney in New York is complicated and it's in two parts. And there are over 12 decisions that you have to make between initialing, checking a box, or signing. It also has to be executed with proper formalities, such as a notarization. So it's important here, in my opinion, that you should have a comprehensive durable power of attorney, in New York, the statutory durable power of attorney, and have an attorney draft that document and supervise the signing. Now, during this COVID-19 emergency period, the governor in New York has relaxed the rules on witnessing and notarization. So we can actually notarize and witness a document signing from a distance. So we can have a client at home who wants to be safe, 
and we can be at our, in our homes or in our office in Garden City, Lido Beach, or Islandia, and we can, through our phones, uh, FaceTime, or with video conferencing, see each other, and we can properly have you sign the key legal documents, and we can be witnesses and notaries. So we're doing this uh, on a daily basis now for our clients. Now, the statutory durable power of attorney is for financial decision making. When it comes to healthcare decision making, and next week, same day, same time, on a Tuesday, one o'clock, I'm going to go over the key documents for healthcare decision making the healthcare proxy and the living will. What's great about these advanced directives is that they're revocable. You can change them anytime you want. You do not have to worry that somehow they're irrevocable. So you name who's appropriate today to be your agents. You make decisions that make sense for you today, but down out in the future, if you believe those documents don't properly express your intent, you simply execute a new one and it supersedes and voids the older document. So that's, that's a, uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, sometimes clients are prevented from signing these documents because they're worrying about how to, who's the, my successor agent. I can't figure this out, so I don't sign the document. Sign the document. You know, we sign another one and add the successor agent. The key is to make sure that you've taken these steps. Which leads me to that everyone should have a plan to protect you and your family. We start with making sure you have a plan for your bills to be paid and your assets protected if you're not able to manage your affairs. As that old TV commercial warned us, don't leave home without it. Control how financial decisions are being made with the statutory durable power of attorney. And by the way, durable means that it lasts for the rest of your lifetime. And the document is effective immediately. But the person you've named doesn't need to step in unless there's a need for it. Now, if someone's very concerned about that, there is a different type of durable power of attorney that only becomes effective at a later time. But I would say 95 plus, 99 plus percent of our clients sign the durable power of attorney that becomes effective immediately. We, Russo Law Group, are available to assist you with the drafting and supervision of your durable power of attorney. Even during this stay at home pause period here in New York, now more than ever, we're concerned that if individuals are leaving their home and unfortunately contract the virus, that we want to make sure they have the proper documents in place. So the virus and what's happening to all of us is really highlighted how important these documents are. So what I would urge everyone to do is create a plan or review your existing plan to make sure it meets with your desires and that it's comprehensive. Retain the service, services of experienced professionals. We're available to help. And then get your plan implemented as soon as possible. With that, I want to see if there are any questions. Um, and so I am not seeing any in the queue. So if, um, if Ashley, there are any questions? We do. We have um, one in the chat box. Uh, the question's from Carol. If you're an independent contractor like real estate agent, can you collect unemployment and the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP? Well, if you are not working and you're unemployed, then you're entitled to unemployment insurance. If you're also the owner of a small business and if you apply for the Paycheck protection program, 
Those funds are a loan to help you run your business. There's a forgiveness piece to the loan if you use that money a certain way. And the certain way is that the majority of that money must be used to cover your payroll. So if you decided to use the Paycheck Protection Program funds, if you applied and received them to pay yourself, then you would be off unemployment insurance. I see here a question, would a personal appointment be better to specifically address particular family issues prior to doing this process? Okay, um, so I, I think, you know, every situation is different. So if there, um, some families like to talk together first and, and kind of uh, address the concerns that let's say a parent has with the family so that the parent can come to uh, have some clarity and come to decisions about what they would like to do. Others will come to us first because they wanna make sure that they're covering all the bases. So they wanna hear from us about not only do we, they want us to listen to you and understand your concerns, but to add to those concerns, any other ide ideas we have to put a comprehensive plan in place, and also to raise the key questions that you may wanna ask other family members about. So it's really a judgment call, uh, whether you come first and then meet with family members later, or um, you're, you meet with your family first, or some combination. I know some parents will meet with one child and have that discussion and then go off and meet with us, and then they take that information back. I mean, it's always good, like I know when we, personally, when I go see a doctor, when I had um, uh, cancer a few years ago, prostate cancer, it was great to have my wife there with me to understand what I was being told and to ask the right questions. So, you know, having family engaged who you trust and love in the process works, I think, better in the long run for everyone. We have a question we, uh, from John. We own a small business and have t been turned down by Chase twice for a PPP, can I apply through another bank? Absolutely. You can apply to another bank. I, I don't think there's any prohibition from applying to, through multiple banks. You can only get one loan once it's approved, that's it. Um, and you might want to not only look locally, but look uh, nationally at uh, banks that are available, especially um, the community banks, uh, because I think there was an allocation of uh, some of the funds in this last round, and they may still have funds available. I know Chase was overwhelmed with the applications and it's been a very difficult process. With Chase, you should know your status. They should have given you an email. And as you move through their four stages, you should be alerted at what stage you're at. So make sure that's happening. If it's pending SBA approval, then you're very close to being there. But like anything else, there are no guarantees. Ashley, other questions? Yeah, would you just confirm for us uh, the new tax deadline? Okay, the new tax deadline, July 15th. So that's really good news. You didn't have to pay uh, your taxes on April 15th. You can pay it on July 15th. You can file your tax return by July 15th. If you need more time, you do have to seek an extension. You, if you pay estimated taxes, uh, those are people who have unearned income and they have to pay taxes in four times a year. You did not have to pay your estimated taxes for April 15th of 2020 for tax year 2020. And you will not have to pay your estimated taxes uh, June 15th um, for 2020. So there's been a delay out to July 15th, 2020 at this point. 
Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, so, oops, I see we lost uh, the slide there. Okay. Uh, what makes us different as a law firm? Um, well, one, we have five convenient office locations. And so we make ourselves more readily available in the community here on Long Island. And we have a satellite office in Midtown Manhattan. We're also licensed in multiple states. So we can not only help you with New York, but we're also licensed in Florida, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. We also have created co-counsel relationships throughout the country. I'm a co-founder of the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys with 5,000 members, um, just a little under 5,000. So we've created strong relationships. So you have a family member in Arizona that you love and concerned, we can help and connect you to an experienced attorney in that area. We're really good at crisis situations. Um, so we, we can step in, we're ready to act, we'll go anywhere we need to. Uh, we know what it means uh, when someone's in a crisis and things have to be done quickly, competently, and with empathy. We're very involved in the community. One of the things that my partners um, addressed was the concern of the frontline workers. We're so concerned that they're putting their lives on the line to save our lives. That currently we're offering to do uh, estate planning for any frontline worker at absolutely no charge. And so anyone who's listening, who's a frontline worker in a hospital, a nursing home, uh, or um, you have a friend or a family member, you can contact our office and mention that you're a frontline worker and we can give you more of the details of our pro bono estate planning that we're doing. For our clients, we always like to stay in touch with them. We think planning is a fluid situation. So we have a client maintenance program. And when we have family come in of our clients, we give a discount. We truly want to be a resource for you and the community. And so we have lots of information on our website at vjrusalaw.com. We created a COVID-19 crisis response page, which gives you the details of ongoing um, activities with regarding to the crisis, uh, steps that you can be taking to protect yourself, information on my daily check-in and our Facebook live events. If you missed one, you can go back and watch um, our prior events. We're also open by appointment for essential matters at our three locations, Garden City, Lido Beach, and in Suffolk County, Islandia. And we're doing virtual appointments by video conference or telephone and home visits. So, you can always call us at 1-800-680-1717 and we'll help you any way we can during this very trying time for all of us. So thank you for listening in. Um, I had one last question, let me try to address it. If there's uh, no family member or friend that would step in um, that I would consider as my agent, what should I do? Well, that's, that's really, a Difficult question. Um, what we often do is we help clients think through the process and try to identify an appropriate person. As a last resort, sometimes professionals will act as a guardian, uh, will act as an agent and a power of attorney or a trustee in a trust. So perhaps we could be helpful to brainstorm that and come up with a solution for you. That's our job. Our job is to understand your concerns and create solutions. And with that, I want to wish everybody a safe day today and a safe time for all. Um, and also enjoy the sun that's out there. Thank you for listening in and watching.